So you just set up your saltwater aquarium. You're getting things going through the nitrogen cycle. Everything seems to be progressing like it should. And then it just kind of stops. Why did that happen and what should you do about it? Let's go talk about it. So we need to establish what the nitrogen cycle is for those of you who don't know. When you set up a brand new fish tank, you're going to have to get through this process where ammonia is converted into nitrates. Now you have to put an ammonia source into the tank and some people do that with fish. But for this video, we're talking about fishless nitrogen cycles, which means doing it with ammonia from a bottle and not from an animal. It's more humane and it's just the way that I like to do things. Now there's basically two stages of the nitrogen cycle. There is a specific bacteria that's going to convert any ammonia that's in the tank into nitrites, and then a different bacteria that's going to convert those nitrites into nitrates. And the goal here is to get to the point where those bacteria are in sufficient population, where the nitrites and the ammonia are at zero, and you still have some nitrates left over in the end. But the bacteria that do this double in population every 30 hours. So this is not going to be a really super fast kind of thing, but you can get a tank through a fishless nitrogen cycle in about a week or so. If you, if everything lines up, just it'll do it in about a week. Usually it takes about two weeks, but the bacteria that convert the nitrites into nitrates, they double in population about every 40 hours. So you can see why it takes several days to a couple of weeks for this process to finalize and be all finished and done. But what happens when you get hung up on the nitrites and your nitrites go way up through the roof and then everything stops? Well, there's a couple of possibilities. One of those possibilities is that the pH has dropped down below seven, which really isn't that likely in a saltwater environment unless you are purposefully trying to cycle your tank at a hypo salinity environment, which you can do. That's a whole other video, but you can do that. In that case, the pH may have dropped too low. You may want to check your pH, reestablish that pH above seven, and then the cycle should continue. That situation is an outlier. That's for people who are trying to use advanced methods to get a tank through a nitrogen cycle very fast and probably isn't the situation that most people are using but I wanted to mention it anyway. The most common thing and probably the thing that's happening to you is that your nitrite level has gotten above five parts per million or potentially the ammonia has gone above five parts per million, but usually it's the nitrite level. Once that takes place, it inhibits the ability of the bacteria that convert the ammonia to the nitrites to actually go through their metabolic processes. So they kind of just go, uh, I'm done. I can't do this anymore right now. So the ammonia and the nitrites stay at the concentration where they're at, or the nitrites might go down just a little bit if you already have those bacteria that are converting the nitrites to nitrates. And that's pretty much the crux of this whole thing. I'm seeing a lot of people right now that are having tanks where their nitrites are getting stalled, and it doesn't even look like their nitrites are up at five parts per million, but the ammonia is not going down and the nitrites are not getting converted. Now, the problem with all of this is we have test kits that show us the numbers of where our things are supposed to be, but they really aren't all that accurate. Most of us probably use API test kits to get through the nitrogen cycle because you're going to be doing a lot of testing and it's just cheaper that way. API kits are good for this purpose, but they basically need to be treated as like a go or no go situation. If you want to say that your ammonia is exactly at whatever level, then you need to use a better test kit than API. And it's even questionable at whether the other ones like Salifert can really detail down into the minute amounts of ammonia. Basically what you're getting at here is you either have ammonia or you don't have any ammonia left in the aquarium. And that's the goal. And so now we've identified that your nitrogen cycle has probably stalled if you're in this situation. So what do you do about it? The answer is so easy. You do a water change. That's all you have to do. You do probably a 60 to 80% water change. It's going to drop that ammonia level and drop that nitrite level down into a level where those bacteria can slowly start to continue their process and everything gets rolling again and the ammonia is getting converted, then the nitrites are getting converted, and in another week or so, maybe two, your cycle will have finished, 
and you're good to go. But how do you verify that the cycle has finished? Well, if you're doing the fishless cycle, you probably still have some of that ammonia left. It really doesn't take a whole lot to get that thing up to the levels where you need it to be. So you can take that ammonia, dose the tank back up to two parts per million. And then over the course of the next 24 to 36 hours, if it converts that ammonia all out back to zero and the nitrites go all out back to zero, then that's verification that your nitrogen cycle is working. If after the 24 to 36 hours, you still have presence of ammonia, the cycle is not complete. If you still have the presence of nitrites, but the ammonia is zero, the secondary bacteria isn't finished with its cycle yet. But in that case, it's usually okay to go ahead and add a fish or two because in these concentrations that we're dealing with at this level, the nitrites are not toxic to marine animals and it'll be okay to add a fish. There's a couple of other things that you might want to think about when you're doing your nitrogen cycle. If things are just progressing super slow, if you put the brick type biological media in the tank, that could slow down your nitrogen cycle, depending on how much of it you've used. A different type of bacteria grows on the outside of those bricks, covering up the nitrifying bacteria stopping them from doing their job because the water with the ammonia in it can't get to them. And exactly the same thing happens with any other form of biomedia where the water can't flow through it. Bonus content. All right. So here's some tips. If you want to start a fishless nitrogen cycle and you want it to move a little bit faster, you can do some of these things and get that thing rocking and rolling super quick. Number one is your temperature. You can increase it to 84, 85 degrees that's going to make those bacteria be able to do their processes even more quickly, increasing the speed at which your nitrogen cycle takes place. Another thing you can do is drop the salinity down a little bit. Those bacteria have to expend energy to keep the balance of salinity between themselves and what's going on outside of themselves. And that energy expenditure means that they have less energy available to convert the stuff in the aquarium to the stuff that it needs to be. So dropping the salinity down some, can speed up the process. And then you have to bring the salinity back up slowly later. Same thing with the temperature, bring it back down slowly after you're done. The bacteria that we're talking about for the nitrogen cycle in saltwater tanks can grow and survive and thrive down to about eight or 10 part per thousand salinity. Freshwater bacteria can't survive anywhere above that number, which is the exact reason why we can't just dump salt into a running freshwater tank and convert it over to a saltwater aquarium. You absolutely have to have test kits to do this. Now you don't have to have the amazing ones that are going to dial it in to the degree, but you do have to at least have a test kit where you can find out if you have the presence of ammonia or nitrites or nitrates in the tank. And fun fact, if there are the presence of nitrites in the tank, then the nitrate test kit is basically irrelevant because the nitrite test kit is going to make the nitrate test kit read completely wrong. So if there's nitrites, Testing the nitrates is just wasting reagent. Don't do that. When you're nitrogen cycling your tank, you should do so with the lights off. Light in an aquarium is only needed for corals later down the road. If you add light to the aquarium right now during the nitrogen cycle, you have the potential to add algae to the aquarium, which is going to use up any available phosphates that are in the aquarium, which the nitrifying bacteria also need to have their energy to do their metabolic processes. So if you add light and algae shows up, it consumes all the phosphates, it's going to extend the time of your nitrogen cycle way out very much further than you want it to be. So no lights during the cycle, okay? Let's just set that rule right now. Now there was a lot of information there and anybody who's going through the nitrogen cycle probably understood all of that. But if you're still a little bit confused and you want a more simple explanation of the nitrogen cycle, check that video right up there. And if yours actually worked and it went how it was supposed to, then you're probably getting into the ugly phase. And that video down there tells you all about that. I'm going to see you over there.